All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Let's go ahead and get airborne on this uh, incredibly special uh, brief this Friday morning. I'm going to start with this. There is no way four, five years ago that I would be starting a live trade brief here at Topkin Options the way I'm going to start uh, this brief. It's just, it's not even, uh, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Um, just shows you the difference a, a day uh, or a night, uh, a night, a day, a week, a month, uh, a couple years uh, can make. What do I mean by all of this and, and how I'm starting this brief? Um, before we even talk about psychedelic stocks or investing or trading, uh, let's talk about uh, at least my pre-flight preparation. Woke up this morning. Uh, you know, brush my teeth, wash my face, uh, back in bed. Well, actually, uh, and then two of these, right? Two, we can talk about uh, at some other points. So take a little bit of a microdose, five days on, uh, two days off. And gratitude. Uh, I woke up in a beautiful home uh, with family. Uh, running water, uh, just full of gratitude, right? So a nice morning uh, meditation of gratitude. And again, trust me, old me, I'd kick my own ass for talking like this, right? I, I would have stolen my own lunch money. Uh, but that guy died uh, on the on the floor of a bed uh, uh, on a in a home in Mexico, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So gratitude. For this uh, for this day, jumped in my car and uh, and went and just got back uh, from a 90 minute um, or 60 minute sorry uh, hot vinyasa uh, yoga session. Again, uh, <laughs> there's just no way in hell I'd be talking like this. Um, so gratitude meditation in the morning, little microdose some yoga. Now I'm centered, right? Because before you can talk about making money, before you can do anything, uh, you got to be centered, right? If you just came for, for this brief and you're sitting here like, where's the psychedelic trades? You know, how am I going to print money? It's coming from a place of lack, right? I need, I need to make money. I need money. Hey man, I get it. Need money, a mortgage, a couple of kids in college, and all that type of stuff. I, I, I get it. But if you're coming from a place of lack, you're going to be absolutely miserable. I guarantee you. 90, um, 90 percent of this is emotional. I, I got you one of these hat, Carcillo. You and Cody's are they're sitting in the kitchen. I knew you'd love the white one too, man. So there we go. Um, but folks, 90% of what we're going to talk about uh, for the next hour, uh, 45 minutes, uh, not hour and 45, trust me. I got a podcast today at noon with Dr. Jonathan Fields, a guy I met on a ketamine retreat who owns some clinics up in Delray. So I'm going to have him in the studio. So we're going to go for about 45 minutes. But listen to me, 90% of investing is emotional. And if you're not centered, man, uh, you're going to suck at it and you're going to blow out and it's going to be incredibly frustrating. When I make a shitload of money, I'm fine. When I lose and have lost a shitload of money, I'm fine. Uh, my beautiful bride had a podcast, uh, episode 33 of my podcast. It's fine. It's always fine. Okay. So let's just start from a place of gratitude and, and, and being centered. You ready for this? We're in a webinar right now, man. You're on the fucking internet. Now, I'm not going to date myself too much, but Coke dealers in the 80s had cell phones. The people that had cell phones were a, were a briefcase, man. It was like you're, you're carrying the nuclear codes for the president, right? So there ain't no internet. Al Gore had the invent, to invent the internet, remember? So we're... It's it, it's just incredible where we are. So before we even talk about trading, I just wanted to let you know at least what my day looks like, man, to get centered, 
Uh, and, and then I'm not coming from a place of lack as we talk about investing. Okay. All right. Let's throttle up, man. And let's go ahead and, uh, and get airborne. Uh, we're going to talk about why this sector, it's not set to explode. It's exploding. And it might just save the world. I tell people all the time, man, there's two charts. Here's the United States and the world. We're going straight down, man, on fire, both engines on fire. And, and it's, it's a shit show. Here's the rise, at least in the West, of these potential healing medicines, man. We got to intersect this point before it is way too late. And it's we're, we're getting there, right? How you can profit while also helping others. It's so funny because I did this webinar back. I haven't done this psychedelic brief since November. And it's funny because like, you know, it, it, there are people that would complain it's not hot enough in hell, right? But anyway, there's some people like, oh, you know, how dare you talk about, you know, making money? I'm like, are you fucking insane? Are you insane, right? If you can help save lives, change lives, and make money, that's the self-licking ice cream cone, folks. Now, if you're just Gordon Gecko or Jordan Belfort, like, I need to make money, and I'm, you know, it's uh, greed, greed, greed. That's something different, man. But many of you know we have a nonprofit. I, I got... I throw as much as I can uh, over the fence, right? I'm not one to quote scripture too often, but it'll be easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, you know, my dad used to tell me, he's like, Matthew, you can't take it with you, son. You're not a pharaoh. <laughs> They're not stacking your casket full of cash and jewels and shit like that. Uh, I, I fully intend to die uh, poor. Uh, my brother... Daniel Carcillo here today, man. He turned me on to a great group, uh, Morning Jacket. The more you give, the more you get. Tell it to the world. So no distractions. Get rid of your uh, electronic uh, nicotine. Let's go ahead and, and get airborne. If you don't know who I am, if you just uh, teleported in from the other side of Mars, my name is Matthew Buckley. Uh, my call sign is Wiz. Uh, that is my Christian God-given name. My parents did like me at least as far as I know. I earned that call sign flying the F-18 Hornet for the United States Navy for about 15 years. I graduated from the Navy Fighter Weapons School. So you see that patch over there? There's a lot of words on that patch. It's Top Gun. And I was a bad guy. I was an adversary pilot. So you, the good guys need to train against us fake bad guys before they go see real uh, bad guys on the other side of the planet. So you had to be a really good, good, good guy to get selected to go be one of the instructor bad guys. So that was me. Uh, mobilized for operations uh, Southern Watch uh, over Southern Iraq, flying uh, combat sorties and forcing the no-fly zone, noble eagle after 9-11 and enduring freedom. The hell does this have to do with trading, man? Being a Navy fighter pilot, everything. You don't join the Navy to get rich, man. You join the Navy to see the world, uh, defend your country, serve your country. But I was always interested in finance, right? As I'm eating my, you know, life cereal growing up in South Jersey in Atlantic City, my dad, you know, with the paper in my face as he's getting ready for work, I'm like, what are these things, man? On the back of the, the Atlantic City press, I'm old enough that we had stock quotes in the newspaper. <laughs> and my dad's like, well, buddy, those are, you know, look at McDonald's here. You know, if you were a shareholder in McDonald's and you go get a Happy Meal today with mom, you're going to you're going to make some money off of that. I'm like, what? That sounds insane. That's pretty cool. So as I was a young, now I'm really dating myself, 1991, reporting down to Naval Air Station Key West as a young ensign in the United States Navy, I remember sending a check for like 25 bucks, which was a lot of money to me, to the USAA Aggressive Growth Mutual Fund. And I'm like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be Gordon Gecko, man. Uh, I'm going to be rich. Uh, and then I started realizing, why am I paying somebody to run a mutual fund. I'm dating a girl, my future bride, who keeps Ann Taylor in business and I pay the American Express bill. Those were the two stocks I bought. So it wasn't rocket surgery, man. I started applying everything I was learning as a fighter pilot to my trading, having uh, a strategy, implementing tactics, contingency planning. What do you mean? What could go wrong during this flight, during this trade that I should Think about right now before freaking out when it actually does, right? Or managing risk. Managing risk. All right, Wiz, that's a picture of you over Top Gun in Nevada, inverted, and you're going to lecture me on managing risk? The hell I am. Of course I am. Fighter pilots, options traders, we want to minimize all known risk because this shit's dangerous enough as it is, okay? 
Um, so how did Top Gun Options come about? Real quick history, and then we're going to get airborne. Uh, on the morning of September 11th, uh, 2001, I was getting ready for my first trip as a pilot for American Airlines. I was packing. I was in our master bedroom packing in Keller, Texas. I was flying the F-18s for the Naval Reserve at a Naval Air Station, Fort Worth, and I was a pilot at American Airlines, man. I, I, that's the lotto. In the year 2000, winning the lottery was getting off active duty in the Navy and getting a reserve job flying fighters on the weekend as a long-haired, slack-jawed reservist and being a rich airline pilot. I was on top of the world. Susie came in and said, holding Matthew, our boy who was eight months old at the time, and she said, you better come look at the TV. A plane hit the World Trade Center. I'm like, I'm busy, woman. It's bad weather or a small airplane. I'm busy. I'm packing. She had a pretty scared look on her face. So I went out there and I saw what you all saw, man. Big smoking hole. Ain't no small airplane. And beautiful day in New York City. As I'm going through my mental aviation checklist of how that could have happened, uh, the next plane hit. I immediately knew we were under attack. I ran into the bedroom. I still have my American Airlines uniform from that day in the plastic from the cleaners. I pushed that out of the way. I threw on my flight suit. And I, in my old 1989 Porsche, I broke the land speed record getting out to Naval Air Station Fort Worth. They closed it once I got on board and they went to a combat posture. So me and another F-18 buddy made it out. We called down to maintenance and said, get a couple jets ready. Next door was the uh, Air Force Reserve Squadron, uh, S-16s. And if you don't know, the Air Force is rich. Navy's poor. The general called up and said, Wiz, what do you got? I'm like, it's me and Gruff, sir. He's like, I got four, four Viper drivers. Get over here. Let's get airborne. I'm like, it was like Lexington and Concord, man. Gruff and I ran over to the SPADs. We're in the command center with four F-16 brothers and two Navy guys. They were giving us missiles and bullets. We're arming our jets. Pentagon gets hit as we're like briefing to get airborne. Uh, it was just, it was, it was incredible. So Gruff and I taxied to the end of the runway because the F-16s were airborne and they, you know, put a couple people into the ground. And by the time they got done, everybody had landed. So Gruff and I actually didn't get airborne. We were fully armed and ready to go at the, uh, at the end of the runway. A couple days later, I actually launched on a plane that got airborne uh, going near the President Bush's uh, prohibited airspace. What's this have to do with trading? Everything. I got a letter a week later from American Airlines uh, that said, Dear Crew Member. When I got hired by American, it said, Dear Edward. And it was signed by the chief pilot, like with, a, with ink and a pen, right? Um, this was a photocopied letter from HR that said you're furloughed. What's that mean? In polite airline speak, that means you're gone. You don't have a job. We lived in base housing in the Navy, so what little money we had saved, I had put as a deposit on our new home in Keller, Texas. So in the blink of an eye, I lost my job, my health care, my everything. Uh, but guess what, man? Who who cares, Wiz? I gave myself a half a day to, to feel sorry for myself. And then I'm looking at TV of people at ground zero with, you know, have you seen my husband or my wife? Or I'm like, dude, get the fuck up. People are uh, a hell of a lot worse than you right now. You don't have a job? Who cares, man? I said, let's go. I had been trading part-time as fun in the background, making money, but now I got to pay my mortgage and, and feed my kids. So like I told you, everything I applied as a fighter pilot to my trading was insanely working well. And instead of a hobby, I'm like, all right, well, I need to pay. <laughs> Mama needs a new pair of shoes. Everything worked so well that I eventually popped up on the radar of one of the largest volatility arbitrage firms in the country, headquartered right there. If you've seen Batman or you've been to Chicago, like Daniel, uh, you know that's the CBOT. Uh, and that was our trading firm, man. So uh, went up there. That's our trade floor right there. I helped build a hedge fund when I was there. I helped build the retail brokerage known as Options House. I had, a, I had, an, absolute, um, I had an absolute blast. Uh, I was the managing director of strategy for a multi-billion dollar Valarb firm. And I started in uh, my own kind of media company. It was called the Options News Network. We'd shoot on the floor of the CBO, Chicago Board Options Exchange, and the CBOT. And uh, I'd give you all, retail traders, a behind-the-scenes look at what was going on uh, in the options market, right? Uh, I jokingly tell people, and now I'm really going to date myself, that I'm I called myself, you know, Valentine, Eddie Murphy in Trading Places, little old retail trader 
uh, off the streets, uh, hanging out with the smart money. Between us ladies, there is absolutely no such thing as the smart money. We are the smart money. I've been in these rooms, man. They ain't that smart. Uh, I love this picture. Uh, clearly, I'm a hell of a lot older than this because this is when we left Chicago to start Topkin Options down here in God's waiting room in Boca Raton. A boy, Matthews, 23, graduated from Norwich University Military College in Vermont. He's uh, going in the Florida Air Guard. Jack, looks like he's got the devil in him right there. Uh, he's a freshman at CU Boulder. We're going out next week for spring break to do some skiing with my boy. And then Keely Grace is 16, going on 29. Uh, she's a cheerleader, sophomore in high school. I love this picture because uh, it, it, it was a precursor to what I'm about to tell you. Real quick, this is our squadron now. On the left side of our squadron, we have a training environment, which I'm gonna to talk to you about today, trading psychedelic stocks and stuff like that. We have a couple services. One is called Solo Amazon. We only trade Amazon. And one is called Full Throttle. We're gonna talk Full Throttle here in a little bit. And then once you kind of know what you're doing, folks, I didn't run from reading a book on how to fly the F-18 out to the flight line and try and get airborne. I would have died. You go to a simulator building. You're in a training environment. Once you're ready to go out to a real F-18 and get airborne, it's time for the execution. So we have a couple investment clubs here that we can talk about down the road. Uh, nothing about that right now. So I do live trade briefs throughout the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, Thursday. Friday, today is a special day because I usually just do foundation work today. Okay, so that's kind of what we, uh, we look like. I've written a couple books from sea level to sea level about leaving the cockpit essentially going to the trading pit. And then I wrote another book called COVID Crash from Panic to Profit. I sat here at this desk and predicted when I saw Donald Trump and Davos essentially lying that COVID, not going to come here. I trust G, great backswing, been to Mar-a-Lago, dumb question. I'm like, get out, because I knew what was going on. I had a deep throat at the White House. Dude, this thing escaped from a level four weapons lab. It's coming here. Run. I did outsider trading. I told everybody who would listen, we made $2.5 million worth of trades in a couple of weeks. I have a podcast called the No Fallen Heroes podcast. Uh, it's called Max Afterburner. It's ranked in the top two, two and a half percent of all podcasts. And then finally, here's what we're here to talk about. Foundation. Okay. Uh, the No Fallen Heroes Foundation. Uh, how and why did I start the No Fallen Heroes Foundation? And if you're sitting here going, what's this have to do with trading everything? So here's the how. Uh, Irish Catholic kid, South Jersey, right? My, I had uh, six brothers and sisters. Four of them were born in South Philadelphia. Uh, after my sister Kia was born, Cornelia, uh, we moved down to Margate, South Jersey, and my little sister and I were born. Um, when I was... 13, 14 year old, getting ready to go into high school. Uh, my brother, uh, John, my sister Marilyn, and my sister Monica were all at Villanova University. And my sister Monica was a freshman. Uh, they all went to a fraternity party one night. And my brother and my sister Marilyn said, Hey, Monica, we're, we're going to head back to campus now. You want to come with us? And she said, No, I'm going to, I'm going to go with these folks, these, these people I met. Uh, five people in a Fiat. Uh, blew a stop sign because the driver was drunk, uh, got hit by a, a pickup truck, and she got thrown from the car and uh, broke her neck. She, uh, um, it was it was brutal. It was a, uh, it was an absolute horror. So, um, you know, a young kid going into high school—that's a pretty tough time for a young man, anyway. Uh, it destroyed my family. My dad was done. He checked out. Uh, and then, you know, I essentially raised my little sister. Um, before that had happened, I was uh, sexually abused as a child. Uh, so pretty, pretty tough childhood, right? Um, my dad died years later of a broken heart. He just was never the same. This is one of my favorite pictures. It's my dad right there putting the wings of gold as a naval aviator, uh, on, on my chest. Um, but he, he died just absolutely brokenhearted. So I took that trauma into the United States Navy. You don't shed your trauma, you hide your trauma, right? The United States Naval Aviator, in 15 years of fighter aviation, uh, I lost 16 brothers and a sister, technically. 
uh, not one combat loss. Weather, stupidity, more weather, more stupidity, acts of God, not one combat loss, uh, but just absolutely brutal losses uh, in fighter aviation. Uh, that's me at my wedding uh, with my best friend, Captain Eric Swenson, Swede. Went through flight school together. He's a groomsman at my wedding. Uh, beautiful bride, five kids, put a bullet in his head. Uh, so after 16 uh, deaths of my squadron mates and stuff like that, there was three suicides. Um, absolutely brutal. Uh, and then I left the United States military in the reserves after getting furloughed, and I went to Chicago. And that transition from being in the military to civilian uh, was a horror. I went from a fighter squadron where you trust the men and women with your life or they're not in that organization, they're gone, to a Wall Street firm where these people would push their own mother in front of a bus to make a buck. It was just the exact opposite of everything I had been wired uh, to, to be or think or, or do. Um, it was gross. Uh, I lost my mission. I lost my sense of purpose. I'm chasing money. I'm in a fucking volatility arbitrage firm where it's just, it's gross. It was, it was a horror. Found escape in the bottle. I found escape in the drugs. I could not have been further from my God, uh, my wife, uh, my children. Uh, and it was pretty bad. Some pretty dark nights of the soul. Add to that 22 to 44 veterans per day taking, taking their own lives, right? So back in the year uh, 2020 with the COVID crash, like I said, two, two and a half million bucks in a month as the market went straight down. As the smart money said what? Oh, the, here's the, the market bottomed out today. Please buy stocks or we, we need to close the markets or Donald Trump. I think stocks are looking good here. I'd be a buyer of stocks today. The next day, the Dow went down 3,000 points. I was pounding it into the dirt. I made little old ladies at Top Gun Options millionaires. 2020, I'm like, I got to do something about veteran suicide. 22 to 44 veterans per day. I'm like, I can't take it with me. That's a shitload of money. I'm going to start a foundation. How many of you have seen the... Uh, uh, the movie Lone Survivor uh, with uh, with Mark Wahlberg or read the book. Hopefully you've read the book. The book is, you know, if you're not crying in the book, you're 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 you need to get your head examined. So back in 2020, a buddy of mine's like, hey, man, you want to do something about veteran suicide? I'm like, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. Buy suits, help veterans write resumes or something. And he's like, hey, man. These, these seals go down to Mexico and they do psychedelic assisted therapy to heal their trauma and their, you know, traumatic brain injuries. Would you want to go? And I'm like, go to Mexico with some Navy seals and do drugs over a weekend. That sounds right up my alley, man. <laughs> I had no clue what I was getting into, man. I'll give you the cliff notes. Uh, it was without a doubt the most transformational and life saving and changing event in 52 years at the time. Uh, that's Marcus Luttrell right there, the lone survivor. That's Jared Taylor, JT, one of the founders of Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, that's JJ. He's a TGO member. Uh, my brother, JJ. And then this is Robert Gallery, a NFL. He was an All-American in Iowa. Horrific CTE, man. I drove from San Diego down to Mexico to the retreat center with him in the car. I had just met the dude. He was fucking dead. He, he was a sitting, he was a dead man. Horrific CTE. And my brother Daniel can attest to this with the athletes, the NHL players, the NFL players. Without a doubt, it was the most transformational sound uh, experience of my life. I got home, man, and I said, this is how we're going to end uh, veteran suicide. I said, this is the way. Top Gun Fighter Foundation, I was kind of focused on Top Gun people and pilots, but that that made no sense to me. So I said, no, man, because they were only helping SEALs and this foundation only helped combat veterans. I'm like, are you insane? I know a couple Hornet sisters who uh, their PTSD ain't from war. It's from us. It's from rape 
and sexual assault, which not to trauma grade or trauma shame is almost worse. You expect to get attacked or killed by your enemy, not your squadron mates. So I started the No Fallen Heroes Foundation to help all veterans. I ain't just helping SEALs or combat vets, all veterans. First responders too, a lot of first responders, a lot of people get off active duty in the military, they take off that uniform and they put on a local uniform or a state uniform. When they take off that federal uniform, they don't take off the trauma, do they? They just become a first responder and it gets even worse. And family members. 99.9% .9 of my wife's trauma is me induced. So I wanted to help all these groups of people. So we started the No Fallen Heroes Foundation, healing grants for veterans, first responders, and their family members. Now, Wall Street is starting to wake up. How many of you have seen the uh, uh, the uh, Showtime uh, Billions? <laughs> I love. I, I they lost me at season four. I stopped watching. It got just so insanely bad and woke. I stopped. I should probably, because I know Bobby Axelrod came back. Um, but Billions is modeled after a real time. Bobby Axelrod, his name's Steve Cohen. Steve Cohen, as I'm gonna show you in a couple minutes, his son, United States Marine veteran with some trauma. He is throwing a shit pot of money into the psychedelic space. So I'm gonna show you recent stuff. Hell, uh, Blake Mykoski, the founder of uh, Tom or Shoes or whatever his name is, a hundred million dollars to psychedelic research. Um, we had a great Netflix series that came out recently, the book sitting right over there with all my other medicine books, How to Change Your Mind. I strongly, strongly recommend that you read the book, right? So we can actually invest in companies that are in the medicine space right now, okay? Now I'm gonna give you an absolute blindingly clear warning. This is actually, this warning is, is going to fade a little bit, but since I did this in November, I'm going to keep it. This is the internet 1999. What do I mean by that? Uh, there's an Amazon and a Google, and there's a pets.com and Netscape. You invest in the wrong two and you're broke. You invest in the right two and you're filthy rich. Right now in the psychedelic space, there are a lot of publicly traded psychedelic companies that are have a bunch of different ships they're deploying. They're doing a bunch of tests. And I'm going to brief you on a couple of these tests uh, right now. But warning Will Robinson, just because something has passed a phase one test and it looks great and a phase two test and it looks great doesn't mean it's going to pass phase three with flying colors. It, it most likely will, but I have always got to hedge and brief you on the potential threats. I'm a fighter pilot. I'm an options trader. There is no infrastructure right now. Okay. We have a date, August 11th. The FDA has actually given us an, a date. By August 11th, we will rule whether or not MDMA ecstasy can be used for PTSD and trauma. I'm going to brief you on the phase three results of the MDMA. But right now, so Dan, uh, Daniel's actually the COO, the chief operating officer of Healing REAP. Brilliant guy. He and Cody said, what? There's no infrastructure, man. You can't, you're not going to do MDMA. You're not going to your general practitioner or your gynecologist. Hey, here's some MDMA, <laughs> uh, you know, laying on a wax paper table with some National Geographics from the 70s. You're going to need a beautiful room with a couch or a bed. It has to have a restroom, got to have video cameras in it, and there's got to be two people in there, and it's like eight hours. That infrastructure doesn't exist, so we are building that and buying that. And we'll talk about Big Farm in a second um, because it's funny. I attended psychedelic science last summer. It was an absolute blast. You got uh, governors, Republican governors, Rick Perry. It doesn't get any more. I, Rick Perry, three years ago out in San Diego at a charity event when I met him, he got on stage and he stole my line. He got on stage and said, Hell, man, five years ago, me running for president, I would have kicked my own ass if I was, you know, saying you should legalize psychedelics. You know, that that guy's gone. I'm like, dude, that's my line, man. But anyway, we got governors, we had Aaron Rodgers, we have athletes, we had veterans, we had hippies. 
psychedelic science in Denver was incredibly swirling. Tens, 15,000 people, folks. It was absolutely uh, insane, the energy out there. And that's why I, I kind of wrote Big Pharma because I'm looking at like dudes wearing khaki pants and polo shirts. I'm like, they're either feds or they're Big Pharma executives, you know, trying to fit in. And, you know, today you can't tell the difference between a fed and a Big Pharma executive, can you? So MAPS. The Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Science. Rick Doblin, man, has been at it for 30 years trying to get MDMA legal for therapeutic use. Why did he start with MDMA? Because it's the most recent one to get clipped by the federal government, right? Psilocybin, magic mushrooms, 60s, late 60s. I hereby order you to go to Vietnam and kill people you've never met before. I'm not doing that, man. I love everybody. Hold on. What did you take to make you love everybody? I took some of these mushrooms. That's now illegal and go kill the yellow man in Vietnam. <laughs> right? So MDMA was still kind of under the radar in the Bay Area and on couch doctors, right? There is no more better marriage therapy than take two of these and call me, you know, Monday morning or you're not going to have to call me Monday morning. You're going to be you guys are going to be great, right? It jumped the lab. It jumped the lab, went to Dallas, club scene, and exploded around the world. So in 1985, an unelected bureaucrat who regretted it by the day, the day he died, his widow says, with the stroke of a pen, made MDMA a felony. So Rick Doblin, I've been to Capitol Hill with Rick Doblin. I sat with congressman, and he's like, I chose MDMA because it was the most recent one to get clipped. So the phase three trials with MDMA, the ones that just ended, you know, half a year ago, 71% of people suffering, you ready for this? Non-treatable PTSD. I'll drop the D. It's not a disorder. It's an injury. Non-treatable PTS. Now, I'm a political science major from South Jersey. The words non-treatable mean what? It's non-treatable. 71% after doing the MAPS, you know, protocol clinically healed. I didn't say 7%. I didn't say 17%. I said over 70%. Now, let's really, really start talking about investing and trading. So we'll go over to here. I was a motivational speaker, wrote a book, all sorts of shit. I'm, I was an executive coach for years. I'd help, help CEOs and high-performing executives do stuff with my planning process. Look at what's going, this is a Bloomberg article from last week. Magic mushrooms are risk, I can't stand these headlines, but anyway, if it bleeds, it leads. Magic mushrooms are risky new tool touted by executive coaches. I can't wait to start doing offsites and keynotes again where we're doing medicine work. This is fantastic. Ditch the word risky. I can show you a presentation that shows, I think it's in Daniel's. So Daniel, folks, how risky are mushrooms? You ready for this? Look at this. If you think they're risky, that's because you're a lemming and you listen to what the government tells you. Look at the harm scale. Look at the total harm and abuse scale of substances. I want you to look at this, folks. Alcohol. 100% legal. Look at this, folks. You know, there's heroin, crack cocaine, blah, blah, coke, uh, you know. Oh, tobacco. Ladies and gentlemen, the definition of a Schedule One drug in this country is no therapeutic use and a high risk of addiction. I just defined alcohol and I just defined a cigarette. Does somebody want to tell me where mushrooms are? Right over here. The least harmful thing out there, and in my opinion, one of the most therapeutic. So who wrote this article? Uh, Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany, give me a call uh, because you needed to delete the word risky. This was in the Wall Street Journal a couple weeks ago. The working woman's newest life hack, magic mushrooms. For a select group of moms in high-powered jobs, psilocybin has become the answer to a packed social and professional calendar with no time for hangovers. Let me scroll down here. It's the new glass of wine. Folks, Bloomberg is a massive investment 
Death Star. The Wall Street Journal, ladies and gentlemen, is the paper of record for Wall Street. Our beautiful friend Kat has just started microdosing as well. So this is, and, and, and here's the New York Times yesterday. So there's Bloomberg. There's the Wall Street Journal. Let me scroll up and just get to that headline. This was in the New York Times yesterday. And I have the shirt on, baby. Everybody see my shirt? It says Ibogaine. Powerful psychedelic gains renewed attention as a treatment for opioid addiction. New research is stirring interest in Ibogaine, which appears to help ease the agony of detox and prevent relapse. It's used in other countries. It's illegal in the U.S. Of course, it's illegal in the U.S., folks. The government labels things the exact opposite. Ibogaine currently is a Schedule One drug with no therapeutic use and a high risk of addiction. It is anti-addictive. It cures addiction. And it was the most therapeutic thing I've ever done in my life. That's a, that's a Schedule One felony. Alcohol and drugs are legal. I will tell you, I walked the halls of Congress to advocate for this stuff behind closed doors. Congressman who shall remain nameless. Wiz, I love what you're doing. You're going to have a problem with big pharma, my friend, and the alcohol and tobacco folks. I'm like, that's your fucking job. You're going to have a problem with those, chief. I don't have a problem with them. Why don't you lead? Lead, follow, or get out of the way, champ. So look and th this is all in the past couple weeks, these headlines, folks. I'm not digging these up from years ago. This is yesterday. And I love this one, folks, because look at this. This is my best friend, Martin Polanco. This is Dr. Martin Polanco. I've been on that floor. <laughs> he runs the Mission Within uh, down in Mexico. So I love my friend, Dr. Martin Polanco. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, th this brought a tear to my eye. So there you go. There's their slider addict here healed just back from the hill with speaks the truth. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think I can say this now. Uh, I could never say it then. I was absolutely an alcoholic. I didn't drink every night, that type of thing. But when I drank, I fucking drank to get some airspeed on the jet. Clearly, that's got to be the definition of an alcoholic. Up to eight months after this Ibogaine treatment, it made me physically ill to smell or look at alcohol. I could look at a bottle and be like, I dry heave. A root from Gabon, Africa. Made me want to retch. Now, I can have a glass of wine with my steak, but guess what? Old whiz, a glass of wine was the bottle, or two if I really had some airspeed. Couldn't even look. I control if I want to have a drink, folks, it is life saving and changing, period. Look at this headline. Now, these are recent, right? All right let, me, let me bring the Yahoo one over here first. As investors pile into psychedelics, idealism gives way to pharma economics. That headline right there makes me want to retch, and it makes me want to party. What do I mean? I'm torn. As Wiz, I'm furious because these companies, they're going to take Ibogaine, right? Hold on, Wiz. You laid on your back for 12 to 14 hours. Yeah, man. It was awesome. It sucked, but it was awesome. Yeah, okay. Well, most people only have time between car line and yoga. So we're going to, we're going to change one of these molecules and call it ibogaine Er, And you can do it you know, for an hour in our clinic, and it's going to be 20 grand a treatment. That sucks. So let me lead with this. Let me lead with Wiz. Healing is free. First of all, these medicines, folks, there are so many different ways to heal. Climb a mountain in Nepal. Go walk on the beach. Meditate. Holotropic breath work. There are so many different ways to heal. This is potentially one of them. Okay? But healing is free. Got mushrooms in my yard, man. I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm close. We are going, I might be going to Gabon, Africa <laughs> in, in a couple months. We're going to go, I think I'm going to go get initiated into a Bawiti tribe in Gabon. W wish me luck. 
for a docu series so we can get the word out there about the healing capabilities of these medicines. So this is what I have to leave uh, lead with: the iboga shrub in Gabon, mushrooms, the ayahuasca leaves that are uh, brought together, mescaline, you know, peyote, God, and if that word creeps you out, deleted, source, creator, divine, truth. I choose to use the word God. God put these things on this planet for us to use to heal. I'm going to lead. I have to lead with that, folks, because it, 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 it kind of creeps me out to talk how I'm going to talk right now as Gordon Gecko. But like you said in the movie Wall Street, if you want a friend, get a dog. I'm going to teach you how to print money in the psychedelic space. OK, so as investors pile into psychedelics, the idealism is giving way to what? Big pharma economics. So. This week, Thibin, well, first of all, let's go, let, let me go back in time to last week. Furthering his position in Thibin, billionaire Steve Cohen buys another, buys 11 million more shares. He holds over 30 million shares in Thibin. Look at the date of this. On March 9th, March 9th, Steve Cohen, Axe, Bobby Axelrod from Axe Capital, bought another 11 million shares. That was on March 9th. <laughs> what happened on March 13th? Breaking news, Cybin receives FDA breakthrough therapy designation. Four months, ladies and gentlemen, two 16 milligram doses for major depressive disorder. Do you know how many people suffer from MDD? Tens of millions of Americans. You ready for this? After two doses of their synthetic psilocybin, wasn't natural, which whatever, 75% of patients cured. We'll use the medical term remission. I'm not going to judge cured. Do you, are you listening to this? 75% of people who took a couple, 16 milligrams, it was a 22 point reduction on the Madder scale. Unbelievable results. Breakthrough therapy designation. That essentially gives you a hotline to the FDA. That's the FDA saying, we're pretty damn impressed with this shit. You got a direct line to us. We're going to we're going to give you rudder corrections throughout the next phase 3 trial to to really get you where you need to be so this thing can be approved. Ladies and gentlemen, I I, I can't even I can't. I heard doing mushrooms, you're going to jump off a ledge and you're going to go crazy and peel your skin off your face. Good job by the US government turning you into a lemming. Safety and tolerability Cybo 3 was well tolerated with no serious adverse events. All adverse events were mild or moderate in intensity. No incidents of suicidal ideation or behavior, and nobody dropped out due to any adverse event. Ladies and gentlemen, do you ever listen to a commercial for Zoloft or Prozac or Wellbutrin or whatever? After they show people dancing around and having lunch and shit, the guy talks really fast may increase suicidal ideation. May it, It's insane. Hold on a second. You're giving people antidepressants that may want them to kill themselves? Are you insane? This does not do that. Ladies and gentlemen, and this was made in a the lab. They're synthetic kind of stuff. But folks, it's psilocybin. 100% natural. If you're the CEO of Johnson & Johnson, Eli Lilly, Moderna, or Pfizer sitting on the top floor, with your shoes on the desk, smoking a cigar, and you see this headline, what do you do? First of all, you shit your pants. We have these people hooked on our bullshit drugs that do nothing to heal them, but they keep coming back for more. I hate talking like this, but they're going to swoop in eventually with their big fucking checkbook and take it all. And that breaks my heart but it doesn't break my bank. <laughs> so again, this is why I'm bipolar. It's I'm telling you what's going to happen because you're here. I'm going to teach you how to make money.
What happened last week, ladies and gentlemen? A single dose of LSD provides immediate and lasting relief from anxiety. I want you to read that headline again. Immediate and lasting. A single dose of LSD. Ladies and gentlemen, this was for GAD, Generalized Anxiety Disorder. Over 40 million people suffer from general anxiety disorder. After a single dose, it led to a 48% rate of remission at 12 weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I can't even, I, I can't even, I, it's insane. Well, it isn't insane. I know all this stuff. I've been in the medicine space. It isn't insane to me. But ladies and gentlemen, it is about to explode. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to, you got to click this link, folks. This is, this is what Bobby Axelrod did. Uh, this is, this chart is insane. This is the wheel. It shows everything. Look at this. The psychedelic drug development tracker. Psilocybin out here. MDMA, LSD, DMT. I love the ibogaine over here. And we'll talk, let me click on this. Let me blow it up. A tie. But look at this, folks, the bullseye. Who is close to the bullseye? Right here, MDMA for PTSD. Daniel, Cody can tell you this Spravato bullshit that, uh, who was it, Johnson & Johnson or Jansen bought? Spravato sucks for PTSD. The VA, the VA, you ready for this? It's like 7 to 12% healed with that bullshit Spravato. 71% with MDMA. It's right on the border of being of making it into the bullseye. But I I give you this chart because you can look at all the other companies in here with shit inching forward. Cybin, a tie. A tie's over here with the eyeball game, man. So take take that that bullseye, man. Print it out and this is your targeting vehicle. Now, because I have to stay on time because I got a podcast to do. Let's go look at some of these names. The first thing you need, folks, is a brokerage account. Like some of you, if you've never traded before, go to etrade.com or Thinkorswim or Interactive Brokers or Fidelity or fill in the blank. To get started investing in psychedelic stocks, just open a brokerage account. Yeah, I use eTrade. So if you're going to join Topkin Options here in a little bit, um, it's probably a smart idea to fly the same airplane that your flight instructor is flying. So I use E-Trade, okay? Let's go look at some of these names. Let's go look. The first one we're going to talk about is MindMed, M-N-M-D, up 8% today, okay? Let's go look at the chart. I told Topkin Options members right here. You see this right here, folks? This was November. This is the last time I did a psychedelic brief. You can go watch the replay. Right here, Wiz told you to get mortgage the house, sell the wife and kids, buy MindMed with both hands. What does that mean? On the trading floor, if you want to buy something, you know, you you're writing it in your hand. You go like this. You point, it's, and it's like a carrier flight deck. You're using hand signals. I want to buy, and you do this with your hand. If you really want it, you use both hands. You're like, let's go, buy it. Go watch trading places. If you're selling something, you, you, you push your hand away like, hey, man, I want to sell this. If you're selling with both hands, you really want to sell something. So, ladies and gentlemen, look at this. Uh, uh, Aaron, I didn't see your... So, Arrow, badass F-15E Strike Eagle fighter pilot. One of the first female fighter pilots to do the medicine. I think she is the first female fighter pilot to do the medicine. Truth, over a year later, and I can't really stand drinking alcohol. Look at that. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen... From the day I told you to buy MindMed in the last psychedelic brief with both hands, it went up 370%. That's just the stock. If you traded the options, which I'll teach you to do here at Topkin Options, there were people who made five, six, 700% returns trading the options. And I'm going to tell you how to do that in a second here, okay? It's because people are like, what names would you buy right now? Top of the list, I'm, I'm going to have like a tied... I'm going to have four of them. So write these all down. Okay. So that mind med. And I'm going to look at that. JG, John Gardner, up 615% at 
as of today, ladies and gentlemen. These returns are absolutely possible. Let's go look at Cybin, C-Y-B-N. Cybin, ladies and gentlemen, absolute monster pop. Listen to me. It's up, you know, 5% today. It's a 45 cent stock. Cents. So right now, ladies and gentlemen, if I, you know what, Wiz, I am just, I don't even know what the hell the stock market is. You could buy 100 shares of Cybin today for 45 bucks. How about 1,000 shares? If you bought 1,000 shares of Cybin today, it's 500 bucks. That's it. Now, I have no idea what the future looks like. I have to say that because my attorneys randomly listen to these briefs to make sure I'm in compliance. I have no idea what's going to happen. I absolutely fucking do. If Stevie Cohen has over 30 million shares, and he's not an idiot, folks, I would buy a shitload of Cybin today. That, those results, folks, 75% of people suffering from horrific depression after a couple, 16 milligrams, I, and I hate talking like this, somebody's going to come in and go, give me all that. Here's what Big Pharma does. You got to love them. And you got don't don't hate the player, hate the game. Ladies and gentlemen, these psychedelic companies are burning through cash like a drunken sailor. I know a little bit about being a drunken sailor. They're burning through cash like a drunken sailor. Doing all the these trials take a lot of money and time. So big farmers just sitting there chuckling, going, keep you do all the work. You do your phase one, phase two, phase three trial. You get FDA approval. And then I, here's my big ass checkbook. And I'm not going to fault any of these guys. Christian Angermeyer, let's go over to a tie. So MindMed, Cybin, and a tie, A-T-A-I. Look at the psychedelic sector. They know we're having a brief today. Uh, up 5% today. Ladies and gentlemen, they have, it, so if, not if, when Big Pharma comes to Christian Angermeyer, who runs a tie and says, here's a big fucking check. Do you think Christian Angermeyer is going to go, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I, I have altruistic purposes because I really want to help save and change lives. I've met the dude. He is like that. But there's two words. Actually, it's one word. There's one word that's going to force him. Fiduciary. The CEOs of a publicly traded psychedelic company have what? Say it with me. It is two words. A fiduciary duty to do what? Make money for the shareholders. So if I'm the skipper of mind med sitting here going, hey, man, those phase trials were insane. We're going to be printing money. And Big Pharma kicks open my door with a massive check. You have to sell. I don't want this to happen, but I'm telling you what's going to happen. So listen to me. Cybin, Atai, MindMed, and here's the last one. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk options about this real quick because I, I prefer trading options. It's a $9 stock, folks. I can't stand Compass. But I would buy it with both hands today. Why? They're kind of scuzzy. They're running around the psychedelic space, right? Now, good on them. It's like the beginning of the internet. People were domain squatters. I'm going to buy health.com today for a nickel. It's worth $4 million. Compass is running around in the psychedelic space and patenting and trademarking everything. Oh, you want to use beige colors in your MDMA room? We came up with that, trademarked. It's scuzzy. It's smart. You want a friend? Get a dog. I'm here to teach you how to make money. So. Let's talk about options real uh, real quick, okay? Uh, I'm going to go back to MindBed, MNMD. If you don't know what an option is, ladies and gentlemen, it's simply, it's a, it's a contract. It's just, you don't have to sign anything. It's an electronic contract. If I wanted to buy, watch this. If I wanted to buy 1,000 shares of uh, MindMed today, buy 1,000 shares, it's going to cost me nine grand. 9,000 bucks. The average holding time, this isn't your father and mother stock market. People aren't buying stocks and holding them, you know, getting the shares in the mail of GM and putting them in a shoebox in your closet. The average holding time is about eight months to a year, the average holding time of a stock. So listen to me. Instead of, would you rather pay nine grand today to buy a thousand shares of MindMed or 
check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the options chain. I'll show you. First thing I'm going to show you with options are dates. Everybody in this room has used an option to buy a home, to buy a car. It's a contract. You have a date and you have a price. So check this out. I'm going to fly in my time machine all the way out to January of 2026. By January of 2026, this space is going to be insane. You want a prediction? I think mine meds $100 stock by January 2026. So watch this. I'm going to click on January 2026. And now this is what is called an options chain. There's calls on the left, puts on the right. We're going to stick over here with calls. But look in the middle here. These are called strikes. Right now, mine med is about nine bucks. Okay. So the closest strike to it's called at the money is the $10 strike. So why don't we buy, you ready for this? Let's buy a single, or actually 10. Let's buy 10 January 26, $10 calls. If I buy 10 options contracts, you ready for this? One options contract equals 100 shares of stock. You're controlling 100 shares of stock for one contract. At 10 contracts, say it with me, you're controlling 1,000 shares of MindMed stock. So would you rather come out of pocket today nine grand, or would you rather come out of pocket half that, 3,900 bucks? to control a thousand shares of MindMed, okay? Let's just do one contract. You could buy one January 26, $10 call for $400, right? Let's do it again. If you wanted to buy a hundred shares of MindMed today, it's 890 bucks. If you wanna buy a single options contract all the way out into the future, it's half. So for those of you who are new to investing, do not ever look at buying stocks again. It's stupid. You tie up so much more capital. Why would you do that? Now, look at me. Here's what I did. I have, you see this little green flag down here? I bought a shitload of the Jan 26, 22 strike. Why? Because by January of 2026, there ain't no way. That mind med is not leaps and bounds above 22. This is the highest strike that is listed. Mind med, the company, and the SIBO, the Chicago Board Options Exchange, come up with the strikes and stuff like that. I absolutely believe, based on those phase two trials and everything that's going on in mind med, by January of 2026, the stock is a hell of a lot higher than 22 bucks. So instead of buying, this at the money call was which was pretty expensive. Why don't we buy this call? If I wanted to buy a single Jan 26, 22 call, it's 255 bucks. Wait, the at the money call was 400. Exactly. Why would why is the at the money call expensive? Why is divorce expensive? It's worth it. The at the money call is at the money. The stock's right around that price now. These calls, the 22s, are called out of the money. The stock has to get up to there for it to make money. But ladies and gentlemen, this is where the smart money goes. You buy out of the money call options on a name you think's going to explode. I'm not gonna sit here, I, it's on one of the slides. I have all the screenshots from last week's trade brief of people who bought the call options on MindMed back when I told them, and they're up five, six, seven hundred percent since November. So if I just joined this brief from the, the other side of Mars and they're like, dude, what would I do? This is what I would do today. I would actually buy, if you bought 10 of the Jan 26, 22 calls, you're only paying 2,600 bucks. You're controlling a thousand shares of MindMed for the next two years or something like that. If, fingers crossed, not even fingers crossed, everything goes well, 
and the FDA approves this, you could, how many times, if you aren't uh, familiar with investing, how many times during the biotech, you know, explosion, did you see on CNBC, like breaking news, you know, whatever, uh, you know, biotech stock is up a thousand percent today on news of this, or this stock's up 500%. I am pretty, I've been doing this for over three decades, folks. This is going to happen in here, period. So my rule of thumb, ladies and gentlemen, I usually don't trade options on stocks under, you know, uh, 10 bucks. Uh, but these are right on the, why? Because the option is the price of the stock essentially in and of itself. Uh, look at this. I think we're actually, I think you guys are buying some of this right now because look at mine, man. Look at this. So in this live trade brief today, folks, we just moved. You see this big candle right here? That's us moving MindMed right now. And we do this at Topkin Options, by the way. In our Max Afterburner group, we all get into a name at the same time, and we force the stock high. Look at this. You see that candle? That's me talking, and that's you guys executing. Okay, so holy shit, I went way too long. MindMed, write these down. MindMed. Compass, C-M-P-S, which I can't stand, but I love. A tie. And obviously, Cybin. Cybin's the cheapest, folks. It's the other day, it had over 30 million shares trading hands for a 45 cent stock. Now, let me give you this real quick. And, and before I forget, go look over here on your little control panel underneath handouts. I gave you this report from Oppenheimer, not the Oscar movie, uh, or Cillian Murphy. Oppenheimer, which I can't believe Kat finds in the least bit attractive. So Oppenheimer, ladies and gentlemen, is an investing house. Look at their report. This was a couple of weeks ago, or it was last month. It was February. So a month ago, literally a month ago, Mind Med was at five bucks. It obviously went up to 11 or 12 bucks recently, but look at their 12 to 18 month price target, $25. The stock right now is at nine or 10 bucks. And Oppenheimer is saying in a year to 18 months, it's up to 25. I completely disagree with this. I think it's a $50 stock. But I gave you this download. Don't listen to me. Listen to people smarter than me, allegedly. Here's the investment thesis about their depressions and GAD and generalized anxiety disorder. If, you, if you're a booger eater and you want to read all this stuff, go look at the booger eating stuff. I just gave you the summary slide. Okay. So those are the names I would buy with both hands. And in some of those, I would just buy the stock. It's a 50 cent. I don't even know. Does my, I don't think Sybin has options yet because it's, yeah, they don't have options right now. But in, uh, I think a tie, absolutely. You could go out to November of this year because I think in August, when the FDA approves MDMA for therapeutic use, the psychedelic space is going to explode. I ain't given a brief in August and looking at you guys going, I told you so, you should have listened to me. August, it's over with, folks. This thing, once mom and pop really start figuring out the psychedelic space and you can invest and potentially make money, it's off to the races. I told you, there's Bloomberg, there's the Wall Street Journal, there's the New York Times with my brother, Dr. Martin Polanco. I got my fucking Ibogaine shirt on. Big Pharma will come in here and scoop all this shit up. Stevie Cohen, the guy ain't an idiot. He invited me to the Mets game to be the veteran of the game, so he's one of the smartest guys I've ever met. So this is the way, okay? Any, and I'm going to teach, if you're like, dude, I have no idea what the hell an options contract is. Well, that's why you're here. Shameless plug that I'm going to get into right now. It's called Topkin Options. I'm going to teach you how to trade options. It ain't hard, folks. We literally have stay-at-home dads, moms, little old ladies in tennis shoes. We got retirees, airline pilots, active duty military, doctor. Everybody is here. This is not hard. If you in the least bit followed me like, all right, well, 100 shares of stock is worth one options contract. Welcome aboard. <laughs> that was the hardest thing to explain. It's just a piece of paper. It's not a piece of paper. It used to be pieces of paper, but now it's all electronic. I'm going to buy 10 options contracts in MindMed. Boom. 
If you understood that, you're in. Again, all you need is a brokerage account. I'm going to be very careful how I say this. If you don't have a brokerage account right now and you're going to open one at E-Trade, I don't get paid by E-Trade, I just use E-Trade. They're going to ask you questions when you open your account. Like, hey, how long have you been trading stocks and options? Uh, if you want to trade options, you should tell them that you've been trading options. Otherwise, it's a royal pain in the ass to get options approval down the road. But if you understood that one contract type of thing, because allegedly they're like, well, we don't, you know, uh, you know, people might be confused. This is what's so funny about it is people are like, oh, I heard options trading is really dangerous. Well, that's because you're an idiot. Options are safe. Stocks can go to zero, folks. Mind Med, Compass, all these names can go to zero. The most you can lose in that options contract is what you paid for it. If you're holding thousands of shares and the stock goes to zero, you're out a shitload more money than I am. So people who are like, oh, options trading is dangerous. I'm like, you're an absolute fool. And I don't mind that because I love doing this uh, kind of on our own. All right. So like I said, I got to shower and change and go do my uh, podcast with uh, Dr. Dr. J. So I met Dr. Jonathan Fields doing a ketamine retreat out in Malibu. He's here in Delray. I'm going to go do a, a brief, but let me open up the doors and show you. I'm going to teach you how to trade options, folks. This, I am extremely passionate about this. If you can't tell, there is no other sector in this market where you can save and change lives and potentially make a shitload of money. I'm not gonna brief all my case studies. You can go look at Trustpilot and all our reviews and stuff like that. Uh, well, for the sake of time, I'm gonna blow through all these. I just wake up in the morning and I piss excellence. If you wanna know, you can talk to some of my current members. Hey, last year, how'd the smart money do last year? The average hedge fund. I, I want to be in a hedge fund. Those are those are smart people and smart money. They made the average hedge fund last year was up 9.2%. How did Topkin Options do last year? The smarter money. This is my personal brokerage account last year, 150%. When did my portfolio really start destroying the smart money? September through the end of the year when it got volatile all over the place. I love volatility. Most people don't. We do as options traders. I took these screenshots yesterday after the market closed. Here's our current portfolios. The primary brief, uh, which is every Tuesday, the primary portfolio is up 75 grand. I got a loser in here, Boeing. I thought after the door blew out, I'm going to buy some Boeing, baby. Boeing's getting destroyed right now. It ain't going out of business. It's got a government. It's a government company, essentially. And then every day that's gone by since I bought Boeing, the news has gotten worse, <laughs> but I got to brief you on my losers too. The only losing trade year to date so far is my little Boeing down there. And that is a two-year trade. I got options on Boeing out into the future. It ain't going out of business. Uh, so that's the primary portfolio. Weekly options where I take uh, what I call sniper shots is about 29 grand year to date. And then AR or uh, accelerated retirement portfolio is up um, about 16 grand. That is What's that? 125 grand year to date. Don't believe me? Go to the Topkin Options homepage. You can scroll down, click on the account. All these trades are documented. I post my personal E-Trade account, so there ain't no um, questions. Uh, losing trades happen, folks. I don't need this slide because I just showed you a, a one losing trade year to date, and it's in Boeing. Uh, there's a Wall Streetism. Don't try and catch a falling knife. I tried to catch a falling knife in Boeing, but I'm down a couple grand. It's a two-year trade. I guarantee you I print money in Boeing. Uh, if you had started with me when I started Topkin Options 12 years ago, you would have seen an average 70% annualized return, and you would have made about six million bucks. That's pretty. That's pretty damn good. You can start with a couple grand, folks. I think most. I think E-Trade to open a brokerage account. I think you need a thousand bucks. But folks, we got. I got millionaires trading here. We had a couple billionaires at uh, at a point because they liked shooting some of their own money. But you can start with a couple grand, folks. What would you do with six million bucks? Well, I know what I did. Uh, I started a foundation. There's Arrow right there. We went down to Costa Rica. There's the F-14 and F-15 and an F-18. Smurf survived the fastest ejection in the F-18. That guy ejected at 695 miles per hour. It's quicker to tell you what didn't break instead of telling you what broke. 
we went down to Costa Rica and, and we did some medicine work. Um, so that's what I do with my money, man. And I bought a couple fighter jets to use as fundraising vehicles. It's so funny. People are like, oh, you have fun. I'm like, hey, man, I flew a Hornet for 15 years. It's like going from a fucking Ferrari to a, a scooter. It ain't necessarily fun. I enjoy flying people who have the time of their life. It's like Carcillo going from two-time Stanley Cup champ to, you know, playing U18, you know? <laughs> it's, uh, so what do you need to trade successfully? You need training, you need a plan, and you need to practically apply it, okay? Uh, like I said, just open a brokerage account, E-Trade, Interactive Brokers, Robinhood. I, I don't care. Just open your brokerage account. And what? how do I know what you need to trade? I've been you, man. I bet... I, Again, I rose from being a self-taught retail trader. Back when I started investing, I hate talking about this because I'm really old. Fucking internet didn't even exist, folks. I had to go to the base library to check out a book on options, man. So I built Top Gun Options for me, for young me. If I had this shit, man, uh, I, I, you know, forget about it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you two offers. Because I'm going to blow through all this stuff. Let me just go to the offers. There's two things. There's one of two things that you can do today. If you just want access to the portfolio that just trades psychedelics. I'm kind of new whiz. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And that you want to baby step in. This is the accelerated retirement portfolio. And this is actually where the replay is going to be as well. Let me give you this link right now. It's only 96 bucks a month. And I think you get like a 20% discount if you do an annual for like, I think the annual members membership's 900 bucks. It's down here. You can join just the psychedelic portfolio for now. This brief is every uh, Thursday at 10 a.m. Whiz, I work every Thursday at 10 a.m. You get a replay, baby. And I'll send you an email with the trade. So don't, if you can't make briefs, don't worry about it. Oh, yeah, you save 150 with an annual membership. This is if you just want access to the healing portfolio or psychedelic trades. Old me would say, hey, for $96 a month, that's a nice bottle of wine or actually a pretty shitty bottle of wine. Since I really don't drink that much anymore, I'm going to say, I'm still going to say that. So for the price of an average bottle of wine, you can check out our psychedelic portfolio, 96 bucks a month. Or if you're like, all right, this guy's not that much of an idiot. I'm going to do the annual membership today. Click on that button right there. This is also where the replay is going to uh, be posted. Okay. Now, if you're sitting here going, uh, oh, there's Brianna. What's this important? Look at me. When Brianna jumps in here in the background, I should listen to her. What's this? Let me paste that and go. Hope you're feeling better, Brianna, too. Oh, yeah. So that's great minds think alike, uh, Brianna, because this is what I was going to say next. If you're like, you know what, man, I want more than just your psychedelic uh, portfolio. I want access to all the shit you're doing here at Top Gun Options, man. This is the page you need to go to. OK, it is this one. Let me post this link in the chat box. Wiz, I want you to teach me how to trade options. I want access to your other portfolios where you trade volatility and, and I get all the training. This is the page. She did get it done, man. Brianna got destroyed with some COVID this week, but she is on her feet again. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the page if you want to join all of my other trading services. And this thing in the middle right here gives you a 50% discount. It's only $29.95 for a year. If you had bought MindMed two months, three months ago when I told you to, there were people that paid for their lifetime member. Who is it? Cecil. I got a text from Cecil. He's like, when MindMed initially popped, he's like, dude, I paid for my lifetime membership. The lifetime membership was 20 grand. The next week, he sent me another text. He's like, well, now I'm going to pay for my, uh, for my wife's lifetime membership. So folks, $29.95 for an annual membership into everything I do is insanely cheap. I shot a sniper yesterday in S&P 500 trades. Let me go, men lie, trades don't. Where is it? Do, 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 do. Uh, yesterday, I shot a single trade that made, what was it, 1400 bucks in, uh, where is it? 
<laughs> there you go. At 353 yesterday. Holy crap, because the S&P was whipping around yesterday. <laughs> Holy crap, I just got back to my desk. I'll take the max profit of 1400 bucks. So, folks, I don't sit here all day. This isn't something you need to do eight hours a day. I sit, I do a live trade brief from after yoga. Then I go live. <laughs> I do foundation stuff. I go to the beach. I go to the gym. I do all sorts of shit. But when I'm sitting here, I'll shoot what are called sniper trades, quick in and out trades. And I can make anywhere from a grand to a couple grand a day, just quick, quick shot trades and I'm out. Okay. So if you're interested in that, that is all of, it's called full throttle. So not only do you get access to all the trade briefs that I do throughout the week, this is what you get. This is absolutely critical. You get the full throttle training. Wiz, I kind of followed what a call was, but what the hell's a put? I'm going to give you an hour of training session on that. Okay, what I, I need to learn a little bit more about whatever. This, ladies and gentlemen, these eight sessions, you're going to watch them over and over again. There are people like, dude, I watched the, the vertical spread brief a couple times and I picked something up each time. So in the military, folks, how do you accelerate somebody's learning experience? It's called demo do. In the full throttle training, I'm going to teach you all this stuff. Then we're going to get in the live trade briefs and do, right? It's like I was on Daniel's webinar last night. You do the training, then you go into life and you do. This is what I do. It's called demo do, right? Live training coupled with this academic training, okay? It's called full throttle. And obviously, if you do the full throttle uh, package, you also get all your manuals, man. I still read these. I'll go to the beach and sit there and like, I probably need to knock the rust off of my options, whatever. We have the primary, intermediate, uh, and advanced uh, workbooks in there, okay? So this is for somebody who's like, I, I want I want to join TGO because I saw a lot of, uh, we did some advertising and stuff. I'm like, man, we got a lot of fresh leads. If you're a fresh lead and you want more than just the psychedelic portfolio, you got to go full throttle. If you're not ready for the, hey man, I ain't ready for you know $29.95 for an annual membership, do this. Do the $2.95 a month. You get the psychedelic portfolio. Obviously, it's in here, but you also get the other briefs. Okay. So this is this is the middle ground. This is for serious people. I'm ready to go, dude. I trust you. Uh, let's get going. This would be the the middle ground. I want everything you're doing, but I'm not ready for the big commitment yet. That's fine. And then the 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 entry level, I just want to trade the psychedelic stocks with you would be the $96 a month or nine, whatever it is a year. It's everybody understand this. Okay. Hopefully that was that was pretty damn good. Just ask me. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, I think they all, you know, MindMed came out with options, Compass. I would, but we'll talk about this in our next Accelerate Retirement Brief. I'm not going to keep giving trades away. Um, but folks, this is it. This is, this is it. This ain't no hot next sector. Listen to me. These people, and I'm not, I'm going to offend, but I'm not going to try to offend some people in here right now, and I love you, NVIDIA, people are getting, this is going to be funny to the machines that kill us. The machines, hey man, I grew up watching the Terminator. I, wa I watch Ex Machina. I watch Transcendence. These machines are going to look back on us someday and laugh. Can you believe these people fucking bought NVIDIA? These people got bullish and bought all the technology that ultimately got them fired, and then we used it to kill them. Can, AI, can computers in the future laugh at each other? They're going to. You can't make this shit up, man. I got buddies in the DOD that are like, you wouldn't believe the AI shit in the military now. And there's killing machines, folks, automated killing machines, and you're buying stocks in it. You're getting bullish on companies that are gonna that are putting people out of work. So you can go chase this hot sector. I'm really bullish on the AI stuff that's going to kill us all someday. Or do you want to be bullish on the sector that's going to potentially save us all one day? I know what I'm doing, and I know what you should do, too. Next week, we're actually going to do a, a, a merchandise launch. 
Daniel's going to get one of these hats for free because he's on our board of the foundation. Um, but we're also going to talk about our supplement products next week, man. Or I can do it right now because somebody asked. I wasn't ignoring your question. I'm trying to end the brief and not keep people here for uh, too long. Um, Max after Brad. Uh, need to uh, start. Uh, Gabriel, I'd go with the annual membership, man. I do the twenty nine ninety five to get warmed up again, and then you can jump into Lifetime. Absolutely, man. I'd go right there. Oops, sorry. The screen ain't changing. Right here. Full throttle, Max. Uh, your name looks familiar, too, man. Welcome back. Hey, real quick, because somebody asked earlier, I wasn't ignoring you. Yeah, it's called Maverick Mind. So Daniel and I were partners in, in a company called My Crew Doses. Love the name. But we made a, a Maverick line of products. Let me be blindingly clear right now, folks. This is 100% legal. These do not contain psilocybin. But my brother Daniel can give you a better brief than I can because he can rattle it off the top of, of his head. Back when Uncle Sam did your typical knee-jerk reaction, all those things are legal. They didn't look at all these other mushroom strains that do the same thing as psilocybin, if not a little bit more, to be honest with you. And they're 100% legal. So everything in our Maverick Mind product, products are 100% legal. I take two of those in the morning, five days on, two days off. I have been doing psilocybin microdoses prior to this. Better than the psilocybin microdoses I was doing. And 100% legal. Yeah, I'll give you the link to this. Uh, I take two night trap at night. I, I, I modulate them. Between one and two night trap, man, my dreams are... My dreams are on point on this, and uh, I wake up fully rested. I used to take a little THC gummy. I used to have problem sleep, and this shit saved and changed my life. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you when, not if, when Uncle Sam makes psilocybin legal, we can come out with a Maverick Mind product that has some psilocybin in it. But for now, these are 100% legal. So it wasn't ignoring your question. I'll do that. Uh, Gabriel, uh, stepped away, busy with health care careers and young family. I'll send your team an email. Awesome. Gabriel, welcome back. It's good to see you. I'm, I'm absolutely, uh, good to see you. Lucas, I don't understand NVIDIA. These companies that bought in on AI seem to not know how expensive it is also to, oh yeah, dude, you're, you're preaching to the, to the choir. Elaine, at this point, would you take 300 plus profit? on Amazon and buy the psychedelic names? Oh, I love a question uh, like that. So uh, Elaine, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Look, this is my personal account, folks. The only thing that I have in my personal brokerage account is Amazon and a shitload of psychedelics. Oh, I have a little Bitcoin trade, but ignore that. Cybin, MindMed, and SIL. Oh, I forgot to talk about SIL. SIL is a psychedelic ETF. P. S I L. I'm not going to cloud the picture, but let me get back to answering her question. Elaine, they're not mutually exclusive. If you are up 300% in Amazon, take a little off the table. You don't have to be absolute. Should I sell all my Amazon and buy some psychedelic stocks? How about pair? Take a little profit in your Amazon and shift over to psychedelic stocks. My portfolio is Amazon and the psychedelic stocks with a little Bitcoin crack pipe gamble trade, which I, I, I enjoy. Gary, I sold puts again on MDMA uh, or MindMed. Yeah, good for you, man. Oh, cool, cool. Code is on the bottom of the replay page. You just got it. Oh, so folks, you can get a discount code. Uh, if you buy our Maverick Mind uh, Healing Profits, man, look at this. Look at that. Look at Brianna, man. She is back from the dead. If you use the discount code ALWAYS30, we'll give you a third. Please don't share this on social media or, or like, you know, it, let's. this is for like, for my brothers and sisters. This is a discount code uh, for, for kind of this brief. I truly did pass away. <laughs> well, you're back. So. All right, I got to go, man. I went I went incredibly way too long, and I apologize for that. But I am obviously very uh, passionate about what I do. This is the sector, folks. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love making money. But making money with a purpose.
Okay, I'm not Gordon Gecko or Jordan Bel Belfort and just making money to, it's gross. Make money, take care of your, your family and buy some kind of cool, nice stuff. And then everything else, man, help people with it. The more you give, the more you get, tell it to the world. Okay, one more time, 96 bucks, man. If you don't have 96 bucks, don't do this. I'll get the replay page. I got to go run to my podcast. I'll get the replay page posted here shortly. It, this is the old replay. You should go watch the old replay when I told you to buy MindMed, and now it's up 800%. Uh, 96 bucks. And then, um, but if you're really, really uh, ready to uh, get going here, do this. Go full throttle max. Wiz, I trust you. I want to learn how to trade options. This is the way. This is the halfway. Eh, let me try you out for a couple months. So if you want more than just the psychedelic portfolio, it's 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 over here. Okay. And then, you know, Brianna and I will get an email out later today with the replay and and these options as well. Daniel, I would consider that. I would absolutely consider that. Daniel said, Would you consider donations to No Fallen Heroes in lieu of a monthly subscription? Shoot me, Daniel, shoot me an email. I will do that for you, man. That's that's a I usually do that with our lifetime members, right? It's like 15 to 20 grand for lifetime. I'm like, you know what? 10 to TGO and 10 to the foundation. But I haven't done it with monthly. But Daniel, shoot me an email, man. Let's make it happen. I love you uh, for thinking about that. All right, I got to go. I got to I'm not going to my podcast all stinky. Uh, merchandise launch next week. We're going to have new merch. The no the psychedelic fighter pilot, man, which has exploded. People are beating down the doors to uh, to get our, our merch, which is great. So, and maybe, you know, going forward, if, if you buy some of, uh, some of the merch, we'll give you a discount on the services or something like that. But uh, our Psychedelic Fighter Pilot merch, we're going to do a launch next week, and we're going to talk about our supplements uh, as well. And real quick, before I go, if you are interested, look over in the materials tab. If you're interested in the REIT, for example, in, in, in investing in, in the Healing Realty uh, Trust, we already we have 50 million bucks from Piper Sandler. We have a big institutional raise going on. You have to be a qualified investor at this point. The angel rounds are done. The people who got in as angel investors last year when I briefed you on this and Daniel and Cody did are doing fantastic. Shoot me an email if you want to get into the uh, into the REIT and I can make an intro to Daniel. Finally. Uh, we're opening a healing clinic. I think we're going next month is our first, we're, this is this is airborne. But Daniel's got a, uh, it's called New Growth Connections. We're opening a couple of healing retreat centers in Oregon, in the great state of Oregon. Thank you, Oregon, for leading the charge here. Um, and uh, if you're in, interested in investing in any of this other stuff, uh, the No Fallen Heroes Extraction uh, series is closed. Uh, there was a bunch of angels in that thing. Um, so you can't invest in that, but the other stuff you can, the Healing Realty Trust uh, or uh, Daniel, uh, our healing clinics out in Oregon. All right, I got to go to the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for coming, man. Buy the psychedelic stocks with both hands. Buy them. If you don't know how to buy stocks or you don't know how to trade options, you got to take the full throttle membership, okay? All right, I got to go. Have a great rest of your weekend, man. God bless you. God bless all of us. Be grateful for this day, man. Be grateful for being able to be on the internet in a live trade brief and be thankful that these, these companies are blazing a path to help this world heal. We got to heal before it's too late. All right. God bless you. Fights on. Namaste. And basi basi, which means truth. Wiz out. And I'll see you next week.